Good day, graduates. Tata how? Today marks a momentous day for all of you as we have our virtual graduation. I know this pandemic wasn't easy. Kumpurong e, kumpurong e. We had to adjust to online learning, but by God's grace, you did it. Kong si, kong si. And many of you did it with flying colors. Hen chong ni, hen chong ni. So right now, let me call on your batch valedictorian, Kat, to give her valedictorian address. Good day, everyone. It's indeed a privilege to be able to stand before all of you today. First, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to my fellow batchmates who have been with me since we were in kindergarten. And after many sleepless nights, we're finally graduating. And as we move forward to college, let me give you a piece of advice. I know that college can be very scary, but there's really nothing to fear. Because God promises in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that He has plans for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. So if you plan to be the richest and maybe even the youngest CEO in the world, you can definitely achieve it. Because the plan talaga ni God is for us to prosper. He will make you prosperous. If you are afraid of failures and hurts along the way, don't be. Because sabi ni God, nothing will harm us. And if, and if... Wait! No, no. Hindi ganyan. I'm sorry? Hala, ayan na naman si Miss Coated. Hindi talaga complete ang Zoom meeting natin, no? Pag wala siya. <laughs> Miss Coated, yung kung nakwento niyo na bigla nag appear sa Zoom, kahit na walang link, Yes, that's me. Of course, hindi pwede na wala ako sa graduation nyo, no? But, hi Kate, I'm actually here to help. Hala, ba't alam mo name ko? Hindi nyo ba alam? I have eyes and ears everywhere. Joke! Sabi ko sa'yo, Kate, sketchy yan si Biscote, eh. Hey, Ricky, may nanggugulo po. Hoy, grabe kayo. I'm just here to help. Joke lang. <laughs> I only appear lang naman if someone misquotes a Bible verse. Plus, Kate, narinig ko naman kasi yung pangalan mo nung introduce mo sarili mo as valedictorian. Oh, so, na-misquote ka ba ang Jeremiah 29, 11? Yes, Kate. But it's okay. I'm actually glad na na-misquote mo siya. Kasi... Other than, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ni Jeremiah 29.11, isa rin sa pinaka namin misquote na mga tao. Para malaman na rin natin sa wakas kung ano ba talaga meaning nun. Uy, naalala ko yun. I can do all things. Ako nag-misquote nun eh. Wow, grabe. Proud ka pa. Diba, of course. Paano ako matututo kung di ako nagkamali, di ba? Kaya make mistakes lang, di ba? You know, ganun yun, pre. Anyway, while I'm glad to see all of you here, it's time I explain the real context and meaning of Jeremiah 29, 11. Many Christians know and cling to Jeremiah 29, 11, and some even use it as their life verse. But if we take a careful look at its historical context, we will see a deeper, more relevant, and even more powerful meaning for the main recipients of God's message, the Israelites who were exiled. So before we discuss the literary context of the verse, we must first look at its historical setting. The prophet Jeremiah wrote this to the exiled Israelites who had been living under the rule of the Egyptians and then the Babylonians before eventually being carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. These Israelites were exiled as a punishment for their wickedness. 
But even though God punished the Israelites for their wickedness, he has not forgotten them. Let's read God's wonderful promises to the exiles. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. When understood in context, we discovered that the words of Jeremiah 29, 11 were given to people who felt their current situation was hopeless, isolated, and abandoned. In fact, the situation was so depressing that false prophets emerged and tried to comfort everyone by prophesying a lie claiming that the duration of the exile would be brief, but actually lasted 70 years. But amidst God's long 70-year plans to exile them, he left them with a faithful and sure promise that God would bring them back to the land. In the meantime, Jeremiah instructs them to establish and begin new lives such as building houses, marrying, and bearing children, doing everything while believing that they are fulfilling God's plan for them and eventually fulfill what he has faithfully promised. Christians facing difficult situations today can take comfort in Jeremiah 29, 11, knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering but rather a promise that God's purpose can also unfold in the midst of pain and hardship. He can work through it and provide us living hope in Christ and a future for those who willingly surrender and follow him. So let's go back to what Kate said. While it is true that God has a plan for each and every one of us, he did promise that we won't face any difficulties, that we will always be prosperous in all our endeavors. If that's true, then people would just come to God for his blessings. But again, just as we discussed, God's promises go beyond worldly blessings. He is saying that in the midst of our difficult situation, he has a plan for us. And regardless of what we are going through, he can work through it to prosper and give us a hope and a future. Who gets? Docs, we spotted. To the rescue. I think alam na natin kung anong sasabihin natin lahat, di ba? One. Two. Three. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cote. Thank you, Miss Cote. See you again. Abangan ka ulit namin pag may nag-Miss Cote ulit. Lalaman ko rin kung paano ka nakakapasok sa Zoom. Actually, guys, I think this is the last time I'll appear. Hello, why? Well, I told you, I'm busy. And kaya nyo nung yan. You guys are graduating high school na. You can just look up Bible verses you don't fully understand. Kaya wag kalimutan na mag-dev every day, ah. Mga miss ka namin, miss quoted. Laking tulong ko. Laki patulong mo naman. Aw, thanks. My pleasure. I'll miss all of you too. Oh, si Kate, hindi na nakapag-speech. Actually, why not give us words of wisdom, Miss Coded? Me? Give a speech? I'm shy. Wow, ikaw shy. Parang hindi naman. Alright, if you guys insist. But, isa lang ah. I guess, I just want to say, as you head to college and face new challenges, never forget that God is always by your side. No matter what you're feeling, what you're going through, He is always there, looking out for you. I mean, you guys already know that. Pero, minsan kasi kailangan natin i-remind sarili natin. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Oh, Shasha, tuloy nyo na graduation nyo. Gotta go.
Is this really goodbye, Ms. Coded? No, not really. Congratulations, guys. See you around. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Ms. Coded. Thank you. So, what now? Well, you my speech, mo, Kate. Yeah, I mean, what do we do after? Ngayon lang nag-sync in na super mamimiss ko pala kayong lahat. Oh, mamimiss ka rin namin. Ka rin namin. Di ba, li, magkikita pa naman tayo next week. Di ba may gala pa tayo? Oo nga, magkikita pa tayo sa church. Tama. May pa times na magkikita tayo. Yeah, but it really won't be the same na. Yeah, things will really change. We won't see each other as often. But just like what Ms. Coated said, it's not really goodbye. No, not really.